Hey guys, welcome to our channel Coders Arcade. In today's video, we are going to talk about a particular error on GCC, which is GCC is not recognized as an internal or external command, or you can say the batch file. So if you see this error, then let me show you how you can handle this error. So first of all, let me show you something. We have installed the Mingw uh, compiler, right? When we were using the C program. So here, when we were using the C program, all the C programs that we have created yet, uh, we were using that Mingwg folder, right? So let me show you where is my folder. So right now I'll go to my uh, documents and in my softwares, I have installed this Mingw32. Uh, this is the compiler for C programs. So here in, inside you can see that uh, this is where, let me show you properly. This you see this gcc.exe file, right? So whenever we in a, compile our C program or whenever we try to run our C program, we compile it using GCC. So GCC is one of the compilers for C. So and Mingw is a full package of different different commands or you can say different different files that are required to compile a C program. And here sometimes what happens is you get an error for GCC. So what happens is uh, actually what is happening is that your gcc.exe file is not actually inside your environment variables. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I go to my Windows PowerShell, I always remember that you need to run it in the administrator, run as administrator. Now let me zoom it for you. And here you can see in my Windows PowerShell uh, that uh, here right now my Windows PowerShell open, uh, open is opened as uh, the administrator. And now if I type here gcc, you can see it says gcc.exe fatal error no input files and why it is saying the fatal error right now it's running gcc is running well but right now it says fatal error it's just no input file why fatal error because i have not given the c program yet the c program file yet that is why it is showing me the fatal error but don't worry it's just because i have not inputted the file but gcc is working properly in a computer so you might have you might get an error somewhat like let me show you if I go to my uh, this PC, if I right click onto it, if I go to properties, if I go to advanced system settings and here you can see this environment variable, if I click onto environment variable and if I go into path, I'll edit that path and you can see that in my case, the mingw folder, bin, bin folder and where the gcc.exe file is being stored, that path is being already added to my environment variables. So in, in your case, your this path might not be added into your environment variables. So let me show you, let me delete this. And you remember, you don't have to delete this. I'm just uh, deleting in my case, uh, just to show you if you already have this, then you should not delete it. So I'm just uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just uh, deleting this and I'll show you what happens. Now, if I go to my uh, PowerShell, you can see I have already uninstalled my GCC, but still it is going to show me that it is going to run. So let's see, you can see that it is running. So one more thing you need to remember always is that uh, you need to always close your PowerShell. You need to install, uh, re, uh, restart your PowerShell just to see uh, the changes because uh, you need to always uh, reopen the PowerShell or any command, command prompt or something like that. So now if you see here, now if I write GCC, you can see it is giving me an error just because it is not able to find gcc.exe file into your mingw folder. It is not able to uh, find the path of that gcc because we have deleted the environment variable. Now, if I, so this is my bin folder, this is my uh, gcc folder. If I give this whole path, so if I'll copy this whole path and here, if I just paste this whole path and if I write here backslash and GCC and now if you see uh, this file has been running but again if I write here GCC and you can see that it is not running. So every time you have to run GCC you need to give the path when your GCC environment variable is not added. So you need to always uh, give the whole path for GCC in your environment variables to run your GCC using only GCC. If you don't specify this whole path in your environment variable, then you always have to give that path onto wherever, whenever you want, you, when you are executing a program. So first of all, you need to locate the folder right here. So in my case, my GCC folder is this in my D, in my documents and my software and then mingw32 and in my bins folder, this is all the files. And uh, now 
what I have to do is I just have to copy this whole path I'll just copy this whole path and I'll just go directly to my my computer's property or this PC's property here if I click on to advanced settings and here you can see in environment variable I need to search for path and once I find this path I need to click on to edit now you can see there is no current environment variable added for that bin folder we have to click on to new and then you need to paste the path right here you can see I have pasted it like this and then you have to just press ok so now you have successfully added the path of that uh, bin folder in which GCC was present into our environment variables now if I press ok and again if I press ok and if I go to PowerShell I'll show you something now again if I write GCC you will get an error why I'm getting this error because still we have not restarted our PowerShell it will you have to remember this that it is not going to refresh on its own every time you run it you have to refresh it so again if I write here now this time if I say GCC you can see now GCC has been running now it is not giving me an error so just because we have added the path in the environment variables now your GCC will be fine so this way you can solve this error so let us see uh, let us try one uh, C program so in my desktop I have this main.c file and what happens is if I want to run this file what I need to do is first of all I need to see the uh, directory for this main.c file so right now this main.c file is on my desktop but you can see here in our windows powershell uh, the directory for this is c windows and system32 we need to change the directory to desktop first and then we need to select this file so how we can do that first of all you can just right click onto your main.c file and here you can just go to the properties and you can just copy the path so how you can copy the path this is the path location c users adsf and then desktop so you need to copy this path so i can just copy this path and i'll close this and i'll say here cd which is change directory and if i paste it here and if i press enter now you can see that i'm in my desktop so this directory has been changed so from c users adsf and now we are on to our desktop so my windows powershell is currently running on my desktop uh, now I'll just going to select this file and I'm going to run this file onto a PowerShell. So how I can do that? So since in my case already my GCC has been installed. So GCC is installed in the sense that we have already added the GCC location onto our environment variable. Now I can just directly write GCC and then I can just specify the name of the file. So which is main.c and you need to remember that always you need to change the directory first. So we have changed the directory and then I'm just calling GCC and main.c. So if I press it here, you can see our, our file will be compiled. Now I need to run this. So for that, I'll just press A and I can just press tab and I can just now you must ask what is this A and tab. So let me show you once you have compiled it using GCC, an executable file will be created here. So you can see this A.exe. So this is the compiled form of this main.c. So we need to execute this. So for that I have written A and then I have pressed tab on my keyboard. Otherwise you have to uh, write this whole thing. So dot slash A dot exe. Instead of that I've used the shortcut which is A and pressing tab. It will, it will complete the whole command. And then if I press enter you will see hello world has been printed. So in my main dot C uh, I have written a hello world program. It's just a simple program for printing hello world. So my hello world has been printed. So now I our program has successfully uh, run uh, successfully compiled and we have run the program successfully in our PowerShell. So you can see that uh, our GCC is running fine now. But uh, you have to remember that uh, if you have not yet uh, given the location of GCC in the environment variable, every time you need to uh, specify the path for this bin folder, like copy here and then paste it here. And then you have to specify main. First of all, I'll just give a, give here backslash and then I have to call GCC and then I can just give one space and I have to write main.c. So every time you have to do this to compile this file, instead of writing this whole path, I can just directly write here GCC and then main.c. And this way you will be able to compile your C file easily. Now one more thing is, 
once you have added the bin folder now here whatever file you want to uh, execute you can just directly call that particular file in your powershell without giving the whole path so in this case we were calling gcc same same you can do for any of the files so you can see this ar file right I can just directly call AR file as well. So if I write AR and press enter, you can see that AR file has been executed. So again, if I want to, if uh, my bin folder was not there in my location, uh, bin folder was not there in my environment variables, then I would have to give this whole path and then I have to give this AR command and then I have to press enter. So that's the difference between uh, putting this bin folder into your GCC, uh, into your environment variables or not. And one more thing is that you need to remember wherever you have installed this Ming, uh, Ming 32W, Ming W32, you have to specify that path only. Just by seeing this video, don't copy my path because my path is different. And in your case, just because I have installed my um, Ming W folder in my D drive, in by default, by in your computer, your Ming W must be there inside your program files in your C directory. So you have to keep this in mind. So every time you have to check where your MinkW file is, right? So this way you will be able to solve this GCC problem. So this video was very demanding on our channel. So most of the people were getting this error of our GCC in uh, different different IDs so VS code also. So by doing this your VS code problem also should be solved and if not I'll make another dedicated video on VS code very soon. So don't worry about that. Try this and your problem should be solved. So thanks for watching. I hope you followed well. I'll catch you guys in the next one. So this is all about this video guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you like the video and if you like it then tell us in the comment section below. If you have any doubts then post them in the comment section. I will definitely try to clear those doubts. Also like, share and subscribe to our channel Coders Arcade and press the bell icon so that you will get a notification when we post our new video. Thank you. Happy learning.